welcome to my channel. If you are new here, welcome as well. This is my space here on YouTube. Feel free to check me out on Instagram as well. It's just the same as my YouTube channel. And I am so stoked you're here. So today we're gonna be talking about something that has been very highly requested on my channel ever since I went on a solo backpacking trip to Switzerland. So this video is basically how to plan a solo backpacking trip and tips if you are a female traveler. So first off, I just need to make quite a few like prefaces because I'm talking about my unique experience and everybody's experience is different. So I'm just gonna tell you what I learned from my trip traveling solo for a week throughout Europe. I understand it's very different based off where you're traveling, where you're from, how long you're traveling for, how much you like to plan in advance, how big is your budget, etc. So there's just like a lot of different things that can kind of change how you plan your trip So first and foremost, you need to figure out where you're going So in my case, I already knew I was for sure going to go to France with my family and friends So I knew after that that I want to do a trip on my own And I ended up deciding on Switzerland because it was easy to access, safe, they have great public transportation Once I figured out the country, I decided on which cities I wanted to visit And I kind of made a route throughout Switzerland So once you know where you're headed, there's a few other details that are helpful to have ironed out before you go on your trip. I know some people love to just like wing it and show up. In my case, since this was my first solo trip, I wanted to definitely at least know where I was staying each night and how I was going to get there. So I'm gonna break it down into four categories, transportation, accommodation, budgeting, and activities. So when it comes to transportation, you essentially have four options. You got trains, you got planes, you got buses, you got cars, and you have ferries depending on the city. So when it comes to purchasing your initial ticket, I usually use one of two websites. I use Skyscanner, I use Student Universe. I'm a fan of both because they usually have the cheapest tickets. Train passes are great within Europe because much of Europe is basically connected by train. So it's a great way to travel around relatively inexpensively, relatively quickly, pretty easily as well. And my personal case, I bought the Swiss Rail Pass for I believe three or four days. I think it was around 200 to 250 dollars. In that allotted time, I could go on as many trains as I wanted. I think it was also most buses and trams. There was like a few little extra perks within that. I also highly recommend booking in advance. In my case, I kind of waited to book until it was a little last minute and ended up having to pay more than I would have liked. Whereas if you book like a month or two in advance, you can literally save hundreds of dollars. I generally prefer trains or buses just because they're cheaper and it's relatively easier than flying. By that, I mean if you're like gonna go from one country to another and say there's like a really cheap plane ticket, but also a really cheap train ticket, the train can sometimes be easier because you don't have to worry about like going through security and checking in and like waiting at your gate and all of that. You just basically have your bag, hop on the train. I found buses to be really, really inexpensive in Europe. Mind you, they are longer, but it only might be like 10 US dollars. Another option is cars. There are some car sharing services where you basically like ride share with the driver who's going from one place to another, which is usually very inexpensive. Um, I know there's something called blah blah car and there's some other options, but as a solo female traveler, I personally did not partake because I was like, you know what? Let's just not risk it. But if you want to give it a go, it is an option. That is kind of the rundown for transportation. If you guys have any comments or tips, for this, definitely leave it down below. I'd love to get like a conversation going in the comment section of you guys just giving each other advice because I'm sure some of you have traveled way more than me and I'm sure some of you have like some really hard hitting questions that I might not answer. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so now we're going to jump into accommodation. There's hostels, Airbnbs, hotels, couch surfing. I only use Airbnbs and hostels, so that's all I'm gonna be talking about. Couch surfing is like a free way to travel, but again, as a solo female traveler, felt a little risky because you're basically just sleeping on a stranger's couch for free. So when it comes to picking an Airbnb or a hostel, look at reviews. I cannot stress this enough. I did not even bother booking an Airbnb that didn't have any reviews. Same with hostels. Some are really crappy, to be honest, but some are great. So check reviews, ask around for recommendations, it always helps. When it comes to choosing the location of your Airbnb and hostel, it is kind of important to keep in mind where you're booking it. I recommend Googling quickly some of the top things to do in the city that you're visiting or check where your next train or airport is gonna be kind of helpful to decide ahead of time if you wanna stay in the city center, if you wanna stay near your train, because it does make a difference. This will help you avoid 
booking a potentially cheaper Airbnb that's like an hour and a half by bus away from everything that you want to be at. Spending a few extra bucks is usually worth it. So again, for Europe, depending on which city you stay in, Airbnbs and hostels can often have relatively similar prices. Or it really depends. Hostels are great if you like are traveling on your own or with a friend and you want to like meet other people and you want kind of more of that like outgoing experience because you're gonna be in a hostel with a bunch of other like young travelers. Airbnbs are great if you want a little bit more space and you want to breathe and you want your own bathroom. It really just depends on what you're looking for at the moment. And the third is budgeting. I personally booked all my transportation and housing ahead of time for the most part, so I don't even have to really worry about paying for that once I was, you know, already abroad. I think my rail pass was about $250, like I said, and then I think I generally spent anywhere from $30 to like $45 a night for housing. Mind you, these were very modest places. These weren't like nice by any means. I recommend kind of keeping in mind when you're saving up what type of things you want to do. Like if you want to be going to a lot of museums or if you want to be like doing big outdoor adventures, like make a budget ahead of time so you kind of know how much money you're going to want and need. So for me, for example, when I was in Switzerland, I knew I wanted to do paragliding and I knew it'd be kind of pricey. So I specifically put that in my budget, saved up for it so that it could happen. I don't have like a foolproof plan. I bet you can find better resources online, but I kind of essentially added up housing, transportation, an estimated amount of money I'd spend on food each day. I didn't spend much on meals. I probably have like a really cheap breakfast and lunch and I just kind of like grab a sandwich from a grocery store and then for dinner maybe would have something that was like more of like a traditional sit down and I just try to make it as cheap as possible. I eat a lot of protein bars and loaves of bread to save money. And then on top of that, add an emergency fund, please. I'm begging of you. You never know what could go wrong. You could lose your passport. Your wallet could get stolen. Save extra extra money in advance just in case. Will that be a hundred dollars or a couple hundred dollars? You just don't want to be stuck in a situation where you've run out of money and you're in a foreign city. It's just, it's just not good. It also depends on where you're going. Some cities for me are very expensive for my American US dollar. Switzerland as a whole was pretty expensive, but somewhere like Hungary was a little bit cheaper for me to travel to. So it really just depends. All relative to your currency. The fourth like topic I will be talking about is activities. Part of the fun is definitely figuring it out once you're there. You can just get there and then you can ask a bunch of locals, maybe your Airbnb host, or the people at the front desk at the hostel. I personally like to look up a few things in advance just to kind of plan out my day. Travel blogs are your best friends because there's these people that have basically gone and done all the research work for you and figured out things that are really cool to do. You can literally search like 48 hours and like interlocking and some will, will probably have come up with some cool itinerary. Everyone might not agree with this, but things are touristy for a reason. So if you're only in a city for like two days, it's probably worth it to see the touristy things. If you're there longer, then obviously I recommend trying to find the things that are a little under the radar. It's maybe like kind of try to meet some locals and see what they do. But it just kind of depends on how long you're there for and what type of experience you are looking to get. If you're a student, there's often discounts at like museums and castles and tours. So keep that in mind. And one of my favorite things to do is honestly just walk and just like take in the city center and the sites and the views and just like see what there is to see. So now I'm going to jump into some of the tips I learned traveling as a solo female traveler. One big thing I quickly learned, even as someone that's a little bit more introverted, is do not be afraid to ask for help. And I gotta put a little asterisk there because I speak English, obviously, and where I was traveling, thankfully a lot of people did speak English. There were some circumstances where I was like, oh my God, I'm really lost, or like couldn't get a metro ticket, whatever it may be, and I had to ask a stranger. And for the most part, people are generally nice, hopefully. But on top of that, don't be an ignorant tourist. Like try to at least learn a few words in the mother tongue of the place you're visiting, even if it's just like, do you speak English? Like you don't wanna just be that asshole that just assumes everybody speaks English, you know? Another thing is watch the locals. Like do as the locals do. Like you don't wanna like stick out and be the blatantly obvious tourist. Like for example, watch to see when the tourists walk the street. Like some will wait for the light in some cities and other people just like go for it. And just kind of try to be aware of the culture at least a little bit ahead of time. Like how they act, how they dress. Like, you don't wanna be like in short shorts and a tank top if it's a more modest culture. Like you just need to be aware of some of those social cues to make sure you're being respectful and to like not stand out too much. Okay, this is one of my huge tips is save everything on your phone in advance. Literally everything and pack like two to three charged battery packs at all time. I literally lived and breathed by my phone while I was in Europe. 
I would like to say that I could just like figure it all out with a map, but I can't, I'm not gonna lie. I made sure I saved all my train tickets, all my Airbnbs, all the phone numbers, took screenshots of everything in advance because you never know when you're gonna run out of service. I would specifically make sure before I like lost Wi-Fi, but I was leaving a city that I mapped out exactly how to get from like the train station stop to my Airbnb and like knew the route I needed to walk. Otherwise you're gonna like arrive at the train station, not have service and be like, how do I get to my Airbnb? On Google Maps too, there's a really great feature where you can basically save like a dot on your screen. So even if you don't have service, your little blue dot will still show up on the map. At least that was always in my case. So you can know like where you are on a map and you can make sure you can like weave your way through the streets or wherever you are to get to your Airbnb. So I always mark my Airbnb and the train stop in advance and save it on my phone. Act confident, always act like you know where you're going. Try not to look lost. If you need to kind of like reorient yourself, like don't just do it in the middle of the street. Maybe kind of like pull over, try to slyly check your phone instead of being like, where am I? Like be, be a little sly, be confident. I usually would try to like text a friend or like my mom where I was going for the day, just in case if I'm like hiking in some trail in Switzerland and I like sprain my ankle, somebody at least knows which trail I was on. Like just little things like that are, they're helpful. Like listen to that gut feeling. If something feels off, like you're probably right. I would never want you to like be paranoid the whole trip. Like that will take away from it. But it is good to listen to that kind of like voice in your head that says something is a little off. Could be right, you're the only one that's looking out for yourself in that situation. Things will go wrong and you do have to look out for yourself, but I like to believe that humans are inherently good. It all went well for me at least. And lastly, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it's not for everyone. You definitely have to be pretty independent okay with traveling alone. I personally definitely enjoy traveling with friends more, like I just have a more fun experience but traveling solo for me is when I feel like I grow the most and learn the most about myself. I personally wanted to do the journey for myself to kind of prove to myself that I could do it, to have time to just think freely. It was like the perfect chance to kind of self-reflect without the distractions that like make up my identity, like my friends or the internet or the little trappings of day-to-day -day life. And instead just kind of was thrust into a brand new environment with just just me in my, my brain. Honestly, for me, I loved the hard parts I loved figuring it out on my own and I loved pushing myself and exploring a new place. So that is my how-to video. I hope that was helpful. Again, definitely leave some comments below. Let's get a conversation going about your guys' experiences, questions, tips, all the good stuff. So as usual, love you all. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time.